Hello and welcome to the Facebook worship service of the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church of North Fort Myers for May the 30th, 2021. This is Trinity Weekend here at Good Shepherd. I am Pastor Tom and Pastor Leah will be joining us. In-person worship has resumed on Saturday at 445 and Sundays at 10 a.m. We do still request a reservation, though it is not required. Please call the church office by Thursday. If you are vaccinated, masking is optional. If you are not vaccinated, you're certainly welcome to attend. We just simply invite you to wear a mask. We are not yet singing, but that is coming. Summer office hours are Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are closed on Friday. The office is open Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are closed on Friday. I'm always available. You know how to reach out and touch me 24-7, um, and I will often be at the church in the afternoons. If you need to call by, come by or call, I'll receive your um, visit or your call. The church office will be closed on Monday, May the 31st, in observance of Memorial Day. We continue our ministries at the All Souls Episcopal Community Outreach, as on Tuesday, volunteers gather and prepare hygiene kits with the pill bottles and the hygiene items that you donate to the church, for which we are quite grateful and uh, we are ever in need of. So if you have uh, toothbrushes, uh, toothpaste, shaving cream, uh, body wash, things of that sort, uh, in either travel size or in larger sizes, we would gladly receive those items, and we will make these uh, items known and shared with the folks at All Souls. I have a Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock through Zoom, and on June the 2nd, we'll be starting a new study, Who Is This Man?, a book written by John Ortberg. We would invite you to call the church office to sign up. That way I'll get your email address and I can send you the proper invitation and you can be part of this study. We do have a reopening plan here at Good Shepherd. Seating has been increased, so there's plenty of room for everybody to come who would desire to come. Reservations are still requested. We are still wearing masks if you are not vaccinated. On June the 12th, we'll start to add in soloists and live singers and small ensembles to worship. In July, we'll start singing as a congregation. More singing comes in August, and in September, we hope to be back up to full capacity and full participation. Really want to encourage folks to come back to church for worship as we have more seats, um, and as vaccinations increase, more fellowshipping is available to us. We're also trying to figure out how to restart in-person Sunday school and other Bible study groups uh, that is possible now. And we invite those who are leaders or participants and are interested to give us a call or a contact, and we'll be glad to help, organize, help you organize all of that. We do have a text to give opportunity here at Good Shepherd. You can enter the number, text to the number 40101, the message, Good Shepherd UMC, and you'll receive a link to the My Well giving portal of the Good Shepherd United Methodist Church, and you can set up your giving through this application and make it a recurring gift to the church, which we really appreciate all of your support. I want to encourage everyone to receive the COVID-19 vaccination. Um, it is much better than getting the virus, I promise you. All the vaccines are safe and effective. In Lee County, the COVID situation is improving. We are no longer a high infection area as local hospitals are seeing decreasing rates of COVID infection. This is one of the first weeks that we have been at 9.5% in the hospitals as an infection rate, which is very um, heartening to see. We did have nine people still pass away this last week. However, the, infect the vaccination rate has risen to 42%. That needs to still nearly double for us to reach herd immunity. So we want to encourage everyone to be vaccinated. 
We have a weekly e-newsletter, which is the most up-to-date information, and it can be delivered directly to your email inbox every Wednesday. Please contact the church office if you would like to receive this. We have a wonderful website, goodshepherdumc.org. We're also on Facebook at the same address, goodshepherdumc.org. And we have a YouTube channel now, which is Good Shepherd UMC. NFM, Good Shepherd UMC NFM, and there you can see all the worship services and the music presentations. As this is Memorial Day weekend, I would like to begin our worship today by offering a prayer for Memorial Day. For all those who have served in military service, who have lost a comrade, I'd like to invite all those who are parents, spouses, children, or grandchildren or of other family or other, have you had a family member uh, who has served in the military to remember them? I'd also like to invite the Gold Star family members to receive this prayer and the White Star family members to receive this prayer. Let us pray. All powerful God, we honor today those men and women, our sons and daughters, husbands and wives, fathers, brothers, sisters, mothers, who have laid down their life for their country. Whether weary or emboldened, quiet or defiant, vulnerable or ready when you called them home, Their sacrifice is too humbling for words, except these which we utter in prayer. Loving God, bless them forever in your eternal peace. Cherish their spirit, honor their commitment, send them our love, And we will never forget the service that they gave. We remember and honor them this day. Gracious Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. I invite Pastor Leah to come and offer us words of welcome and the psalm of the week. Welcome, church family and friends. We celebrate that God is with us. Let us open our hearts and receive the word of God, the message of God, the blessings of God for us today. The Psalm of the week is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord, glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap like a calf, Sorion like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes, shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all cry, 
glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And let us now enjoy the, some special music. To God be the glory. We come now to our time of joys and concerns. We want to lift up Jamie Cox, who is having an MRI today on Wednesday the 26th. Arlene Fenn is having a bone scan and a CT scan this week. Miriam Caruso's health has declined due to many factors, including her chronic MS condition. We want to lift her up in our prayers. Linda Dixon will be going to Lee Memorial for rehabilitation following her stroke. Um, I visited with Betty Rossi at Hope Hospice on Monday. She is much weaker and is generally sleeping. We want to pray for Betty as she's coming to the close of her life. Jamie Cox's brother-in-law, Dennis Labiuk, has suffered a heart attack last Friday and who'll be having heart bypass surgery. Lorraine Schultz's brother, Harold Pete, has been diagnosed with leukemia and has also suffered some strokes. Ron Dobson, who is Sid Dobson's brother, 
has been diagnosed with cancer and is now under the care of hospice. Sharon Gable's son, Tim Gable, was taken to the hospital on May the 20th, and he was then discharged on Sunday. And then on the 25th, on Tuesday, he passed out at home, and he has remained unconscious. Um, he is now in ICU, and we want to lift them, Sharon and her son Tim, up in our prayers. Eugene Grueling will be having surgery on May the 27th. We want to lift up Eugene and Eleanor. And we do have a joy. Marilyn Venicio's daughter, Cindy Harms, has been found to have no cancer cells in her latest tests. And Marilyn um, has been with her in Iowa for this whole winter season and is now coming back to Florida. And we want to welcome Marilyn back and give praise to God for the recovery of her daughter. Let us now join our hearts together in the pastoral prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, from the beginning of time to the end of eternity, you have chosen to use your power and majesty to love us, to redeem us, to shape us as your people. So, loving Father, forgive our short-sightedness, our self-centeredness, our myopic vision of your future for all of creation. We claim to be kingdom people, seeking to obey your commands. Have mercy upon us and restore our vision and acceptance of your kingdom coming into creation. King of kings and Lord of lords, you became weak so we could confront, so you could confront the strength of sin and death, confounding their ridicule with your resurrection. Precious Savior, you demonstrated to us the power of humility love, and service, to overcome the pain, suffering, and bondage of sin in this world. Lord, we place your example at the center of our lives, and we now commit ourselves to be your disciples, imitators of your example as we live each day. Spirit of God, resting upon us. May your power inflame us with your peace. May your peace touch us with your grace. May your grace fill us with your hope. And may your hope lead us into your kingdom. Come, Holy Spirit, to transform and empower us to share your loving presence with all people of this world. God in community, holy in one, may your word be on our lips. May we be united and connected as you are united and connected as three in one and one in three. Lead us as a community of faith and forgive our fragmentation, isolation, segmentation, and separation. Bind us together, even when we are apart from each other. Bind us with your love. As a community of faith, we lift up the names and needs of many sisters and brothers on this day. Gracious Lord, hear our prayers for those in need of healing. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for those lost and alone. 
We pray for peace in this world. We pray for this good shepherd and all the community of faithful believers across the world. We pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I would invite you to remember to offer your support to the church because it is by your support that we are able to continue to be in ministry. You may make those offerings in person. You can mail them to the church through the secure postal box that we have. You can use your online banking opportunities, or you can use the MyWell online giving application by typing by going to the website mywell.org slash give slash Good Shepherd UMC. We really do appreciate your support, and please be assured that it is used wisely and well as God directs our ministries. I invite you to now enjoy a wonderful offering of music, the beautiful hymn, Father, I Adore You. Father, I adore you, lay my life before you, how I love you. Father, I adore you, lay my life before you, Our scripture lesson for today are familiar words from the Gospel of John again, the third chapter, John 3, 1 through 7. John 3, 1 through 7. This is the encounter of Jesus and Nicodemus. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. 
You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you on, of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if, if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So I'm calling this presentation, Happy Rebirthday. Happy Rebirthday. The closing lines of today's scripture lesson are well known and loved because they assure us of God's amazing love promise. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Oh, these are beloved words, words of promise and hope. But why don't people get it? It seems so clear, so obvious. Why don't people get it? Why didn't Nicodemus get it? Well, let's get to know Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Jewish leader, a man of influence, prestige, he was probably a Pharisee, and it says he was a member of the ruling council, the Sanhedrin, which was all filled with the legal experts. He probably encountered Jesus in the temple, which is recorded in John 2, as Jesus was there in the temple praying, teaching, and in that time, in that scene, he declared that he would destroy and rebuild the temple in three days, and then he expels the money changers. I'm sure that Jesus caught Nicodemus' attention with that. Nicodemus is thinking to himself, who is this Galilean rabbi? coming here into Jerusalem with such authority, such power. Nicodemus visits Jesus at night. And actually, that could have two meanings. First, all rabbis studied at night. So you could think, well, Nicodemus is simply coming to study Jesus. Or perhaps the Gospel of John is saying that Nicodemus is actually surrounded by and stuck in personal darkness and confusion, the night. So he is bringing all of his darkness to meet Jesus, who is the source of all light. Nicodemus respectfully, gracefully addresses Jesus Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, 
For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Nicodemus recognizes God in Jesus. Nicodemus is seeking. Jesus knows this and speaks right to Nicodemus' unspoken concern. The kingdom of God. Nicodemus is confused by Jesus. Perhaps some of us are confused by Jesus as well. How am I to be born anew? I'm old. I'm already born. I am as I am. What you see is what you get. How is all of this possible? Faith. Faith. Faith is the conviction for which we hope, but that we yet cannot see. Faith. We are all assured by the scriptures and generations of Christian preachers that we can trust, we can have faith in God. God is faithful. We simply must have faith, trust, that God truly does love us and that God will care for us. And that through this faith, we will receive a new birth. But new birth requires old death. New birth requires old death. And by what I, what I mean by that, is to say, it is our old self that must die. We do that by confessing our sin and asking for God's forgiveness. We must, in that moment, die to ourselves. We must die to our self-interest and all of our preferences. We must then accept God's will, God's way for our lives, and we must cast away our will, our way, our preferences. We are following God. We are following God after the example of Jesus Christ. We're not leading God. We're not conjoling God. We're not trying to trick God, sneak around God with some cute, fancy ways. None of those are options that are even really possible, though there's lots of folks who try. And in that moment of accepting and following, the question hits us square in the face. Does God really love me that much to forgive me, to lead me? Well, there is plenty of evidence in the Bible. The life of Jesus as the Son of God who does come to us humble in his birth. He struggles to grow up. He lives, he learns a trade just like all of us. God made flesh, God with us. The teachings of Jesus, he teaches with such wisdom and authority. It's recognized by many, even Nicodemus, even the demons. The person of Jesus, Jesus was kind. He was compassionate. Jesus accepts crucifixion for our benefit. He bears an unjust arrest and judgment at the hands of cruel and envious people. His disciples all desert him. And he's hang, as he's hanging on the cross, as he is on the cross, he says, 
from Luke 23, 34. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And that's true. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know as much as we hope or as much as we pretend. Jesus dies our death at our hands and forgives us. That's love. That's love. Now, resurrection comes as the surest sign, a great sign, a clear sign of God's love. Jesus is the first fruits, the first evidence of God's, of the expanse of God's love. Then he visits with those who had deserted him, and he gives them peace. He forgives them. He calls them. He trusts them with a mission and then gives them the Holy Spirit power to complete that mission. That is love. That is trust. That is faith from God to us that God is already showing to us. All of this teaching, all of these examples are actually about grace. Do you know what grace is? Grace is not getting what you deserve. Grace is receiving more than you deserve. Because you see, in grace, God's judgment stands, but the penalty for our sin is withheld. It is forgiven. Mercy and forgiveness demonstrate the dimensions of God's love and grace for all of us. Disciples accept God's grace. Disciples live by God's grace. Disciples share God's grace. Disciples are not only to share what Jesus did, the story, the history, the information, but we are to show what Jesus actually does in our lives, which is recognized in transformation, in mercy, in service, and, the, and in the words of hope. No one has nothing to share or to show of their life with Christ as a disciple. Even with your last breath, I can assure you, even with your last breath, you can show others how to die faithfully, hopefully, gracefully. Now, Nicodemus is only mentioned one other time in the scriptures. It's at the close of the life of Jesus. He helps Joseph of Arimathea bury the body of Jesus. We could suppose perhaps Nicodemus was in the upper room with the disciples at the closing supper. Maybe Nicodemus was actually in the Sanhedrin hall when they cast the judgment on Jesus. Maybe he was even at the foot of the cross among the other council leaders as they hurled insults at Jesus. Perhaps even Nicodemus was at the coast 
when Jesus and Peter and the other disciples had breakfast and received their mission and their forgiveness, I do hope that he did receive his re-birthday wish. And I want to wish all of us a happy re-birthday. For we remember that God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish, but will have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Let us be born again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Second Corinthians 14. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. Loving God, we thank you for new life in Christ. We thank you for your call upon our lives to be Christians, to be disciples, and to follow Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, for your grace, and for the gift of faith that allow us to believe and to share the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone. We thank you, our Lord and our God. Amen. My brothers and sisters, receive the blessing of God our Father, Jesus Christ our Savior, and the power of the Holy Spirit. May you be a new person, starting today believing in the gospel that has been given to us in John 3.16. May you be the one that shares the gospel with everyone you encounter this week. Shalom. Go now in peace. <laughs>